Right. Hello, everyone. We are live. I've got Susie Krabacher back on the show. It was This was one of the biggest episodes we've ever done. It's caused a huge uh, furore, mostly supportive furore, but sh shocked at you know what's going on. Susie, um, oh, I should say, actually, before we start, we have to be a little bit careful about the words we use on the live streams because YouTube kicks us off if we use too many. So we, we have to talk about things like um, child... Uh, and not use that word afterwards, what happens to them. But, you know, things bad things happen to them, th their lives are taken away and all these kinds of things. Um, Susie, do you want to refresh us a little bit before we go into what we will be talking talking about today, which is taking some questions from people, and um, we, we will put some links in the description so people can actually see some of the photographic evidence you have of what is happening to children in Haiti. Do you want to give us a bit, without going into too many, you know, buzzwords that YouTube are going to kick us off for, Give us a bit of a okay. rundown of, of it all. Okay, I'm going to try to do it without the buzzwords. Um, I've never done that before. <laughs> so in Haiti, um, I worked in Haiti for 30 years this month. And in the beginning, um, in 1994, I, I discovered a hospital in Haiti that a lot of children were abandoned at. Um, I started working there, bringing medicine, diapers, uh, water to the, the pediatric patients. And I discovered about a year after being in that hospital almost every day while I was in Haiti, I discovered a room of children that were all disabled children or um, had various congenital birth defects. And some of them were in cages. Some of them were clearly in devastating states of neglect. Um, a couple of these children, as I spent time in that room in the dark, I realized had already been deceased. So I, I started to observe why, I, I asked questions, why were those particular children left in this room in the dark right next to the morgue? And as time went by, people started letting me know that in Haiti, children who have disabilities or um, usually vis mostly visible dis disabilities or mental illnesses are shunned. And I don't mean sh shunned, just they're basically not given sustenance to survive. Um, oh my God. Nutrition is withdrawn. They're the, the parents, if there if they're are living parents, are usually kicked out of their communities. So the practice in Haiti is either to do away with that baby or to some women don't have the heart to do that. And I, I've seen over the, the last 30 years, um, I've seen women coming into the courtyard of the hospital with a bundle of what appears to be a baby weeping. And I know that some of these women just love their children, but they feel obligated to abandon that child. What they don't know, is, I believe that these women think that if they abandon the child in various hospitals, that the child would be cared for. If it were abandoned here, the child would be cared for and maybe even adopted. But what they don't know, and what I've spent the last two decades trying to make known, is those children are, are often used for, um, I, I'm trying to think of a way to say it in a way that we mm. won't get, for, for, it's, it's for their, for the, for their, or we can say organs, hopefully. Can is we that say that? Okay, for I their organs. So. Not too many times, I guess. I am sorry for everyone. We're infantilizing everyone like this, but YouTube just has it. It's an automated thing, and they'll just take the video down. I know. But they, th this is what they do not realize. If the women, the moms who are abandoning their children there thinking that they're going to get help, it is not happening. So um, I started in 1996. I, I asked for a contract with the hospital to hire my own people, my own doctors, just to take care of those children who were abandoned in one particular hospital because it was the biggest government hospital in the country. And I started documenting, photographing, videoing um, the things that I saw. And I haven't 
on the last interview, people um, were like, where's your proof of this? It's too awful to believe. It can't be possible. I mean, this, this, is, this is crazy. We do have the proof of piles and piles of these children who have been used for parts. And then uh, uh, the morgues are full of these children who have slits on their, their backs, their genitals removed. Um, this is, you, the sexual part is voodoo, voodoo only. Um, there are very graphic photographs that are, I think, available somewhere. Um, and I gotta tell you, it's graphic, it's disturbing. Do not open it unless you're prepared mm -hmm. and you really, I don't see the benefit of looking at these photographs other than it's proof. I wish I had never seen what I saw. I've been in trauma therapy for years, um, knowing that during the 14 years I worked in that government hospital, I, I couldn't save probably 50% of them, but I do believe that we saved at least 50% of them. Hmm. It's extraordinary what you've done, and I'm amazed by it. And obviously, you show, I mean, it wasn't just you that some people criticized, because I got a bit of it as well. And they're saying, oh, why don't you check these things? And it's all nonsense. And But I had to already done that. You'd already sent me uh, these photos, and people didn't then believe that. So for those who do want to see, there is, we couldn't show them on a YouTube video for that same reason, the same reason we can't speak freely about these kinds of things, because it would just get taken down. Um, but there is a link in the description to the pictures from the Stern magazine article that many doubted existed. Uh, and these are, there are pictures of Susie there as well. Some of them are, are, are not too graphic and then some of the photos are very graphic. And I would advise people not to click on them, but uh, we thought just, you know, at the end of the day, it's important that people do believe that this is happening and know that it's happening. I think people should be giving to Susie's charity as well, which we'll have it. We've got a link to in the description. Uh, and if people cast doubt on it, then that's just going to make things worse. And that's why we decided after a lot of talking that we would put the link there. And if people want to click it, they can do that. And if you don't want to see it, and I would advise you not to. Uh, then don't. But but Susie, I mean, that video we did, so, you know, it went off in a way that I don't think either of us expected, really. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about the negative, um, which is, you know, people just just not believing the story and being aggressive or whatever. Those were in a very, very small minority, though. Um, what kind of positive reaction have you had from people? You know, um, I'm a Christian. So the reason I think that I survive doing this job, which it's a, it really is a miracle that I haven't been hurt, harmed, um, disappeared because of the way I do speak so openly about what's still happening in Haiti. As recently as a month ago, my, my, my staff um, work in an area that is right now kind of calm, but they have to go through uh, an area that people are being literally beheaded every day. But the thing that I asked them to, if, there were, if they saw evidence of child abuse in these areas, please photograph it, show it to me, tell me, because I do, the, the child protection services in Haiti have no budget. They can't do anything. But we do, with the help of people who are interested in this sort of atrocity, we do have ways to, to help these children. So less than a month ago, um, my nurse was going to work and she came by a a burned body. It was that of a woman who had had the child cut out of her belly and the child was still attached by the umbilical cord, but parts were removed. Okay. So this is not something that happened decades ago. This is stuff that is happening now, this month, last month, every day. I've been told by some of the people who um, watched, a, a lot of people that are interested are su not surprising, um, 
Christians who wanted to say, I want to pray. I don't have any money, but I need to know how to pray specifically about this. And then I was absolutely shocked that several people called and said, my child was disappeared. My child, they told me my child died, that died in the hospital, but I never saw the body. I never saw my child's Haiti. body here in the U.S. Now, oh I don't have any proof of these stories being, um, I haven't vetted any of these stories, so I can't tell you, but I don't understand why someone would email me. And if a few I've called, um, because I gave my email on the last show and a few have asked that I call and I've spent hours on the phone with weeping mothers with the same story. I, I never got to bury my child. I don't, and I have, I'm, I'm a poor woman. I don't, one uh, woman was a prostitute and she said, I never saw my child and there was nothing I could do about it. So I don't know the legitimacy of these stories here in the U S but if it's happening so close and so visibly in a country that's 500 miles away from us, I, I don't, I don't just, um, it, it affected me. And I, I prayed with these people. There's nothing that can be done now. Um, but if people know about the things that are happening to our children, you know, there is an active, sex trafficking um, issue all over the U.S. and the Caribbean. This is also, you know, another thing that we, um, I don't go in and rescue children that I believe are going to be trafficked, but I can tell you that the 112 children that we have would have been trafficked or their organs would have been trafficked. My word. It's just such a horrible thought. And I suppose it makes sense and, 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 you know, I think some people might have accused us of just saying, oh, look at those people in Haiti and uh, particularly because of the racial issue and the poverty over there. Oh, bad things can only happen over there. And I mm -hmm. think we're discovering more and more how much they happen in our own backyard, whether Truly. that be in the States, the UK, Europe, all these things do go Truly. on. Truly. And that, you know, the racist issue was kind of naive because my husband and I did not have our own white children we adopted 112 children of color, many of whom are severely disabled and their care is extremely expensive. So the, you can throw that racist thing out the window. That doesn't apply here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wasn't saying it. I'm just saying- No, I know you were. I didn't mean um, that. Yeah. Well, uh, by the way, some people saying they can't see the link. If you can't, just uh, maybe refresh the stream because I put it in there after we'd already started. You might have to refresh mm -hmm. and then you'll see it okay. uh, in the description if you want to click on it. Some people are saying they advise not to not to open it. I would just say anyone, um, we want this video to spread as far as the first one did um, just because we want Susie's message to get out there as much as possible. So make sure you've hit the like button because that helps to make the video go out there, I believe. I think that's what helps it. And, and click share and all these kinds of things. And, you know, um, Susie, how... How can people uh, how can people help and stop this going on? We have we have a special like it's it's a private, more private Haiti Children Facebook community link that addresses this particular issue. Um, we set that up because hundreds of thousands of people were interested in knowing more, and I actually believe that. When people start, to, I had no idea that this could possibly be an issue in the United States. I didn't, I, it never crossed my mind. But because we've all linked together, our voices are, it, it gives um, validity to the fact that this is true. It is real. It's horrible. It can be stopped. And we're actively doing something to stop it. I have contacts with hospitals all over Haiti with nurses, uh, hospital founders, and they know that if there is a child that is abandoned in their hospital, the orphanages really want the healthy children because those children are adopted usually it's 43,000, I think right now for an adoption in Haiti. So they, you know, it's a very lucrative business, but 
the ones who have disabilities are only valuable for their parts. But we want those children. We want to raise them. We want to give them a true life and, and, and cherish them. So um, I was on the phone this weekend with a former presidential candidate in Haiti, and he was, Susie, you cannot, you cannot make Haiti look like it is just full of satanic people. And I wanna say, I wouldn't be in that country. I actually hold a Haitian passport. I am, uh, that is my country. I love mm -hmm. Haiti. I wouldn't have stayed there for 30 years and risked my life if I didn't have this adoration for the people of Haiti. And many times I wanted to leave Haiti and take all my children to the Dominican Republic or to Jamaica to get them out of the dangers that are there. Every time I've tried, and I, I've even um, as, as recently as last Monday, spoke with the State Department and several ambassadors saying, can we please leave Haiti temporarily with my kids, just temporarily? And we were told very straightforward that leaving Haiti, this organization takes care of 60% of abandoned disabled children that survive. There's only three of us in Haiti that do this work. And one is very, very small, but who cares? They're doing it, and I'm so thankful they're there. And then the other one is no longer taking disabled children because they're full. So we have the capacity to still continue taking these children. So the, the answer from the government of Haiti is, no, you're not leaving. My word. So, yeah, what well, this is... Well, actually, I just want to summar summarize, I suppose. This is happening to children, it appears, from what you're saying, for several reasons. One of them is voodoo, um, and one of them is making money from organs yeah. and things. And then I guess the third reason is people in the States, in Haiti, in different parts of the world, uh, who don't know how to look after disabled children. And I just That's a point, too. Hmm. That's a really big point. If, you're, if you give birth to a child that looks really different, and you're a poor woman who uh, maybe you're 14, 15, you live in a village in Haiti, you've never learned how to read or write, you've never ridden in a car, um, you don't know how to get to a hospital, you don't have ID papers to even admit yourself into a hospital or your child, your child does not have a birth certificate, you're f frustrated. And we, um, a really wonderful family in Colorado built for us a physical therapy center for our abandoned disabled children. And it's state of the art. It's, I, I would say it's the best in Haiti or maybe, maybe on the entire island of Hispanola. But we've gotten on the backs of donkeys with t-shirts with our phone number on the back with megaphones saying, if you have a child and the child looks different, please don't give your child up. Call this number. And we have... I, I'm guessing over a hundred women who have come through our th physical therapy center and we've given them hope saying, look, you need to go to work, leave your child here at the physical therapy center all day. That child can play with other children. You go work. We don't charge anything. Keep your child. And we usually, when we're able, put them on a feeding program as well so that the baby gets the proper nutrition because they might not know about infamil or, um, you know, things that they, they don't have access to as a, a poor woman living in a village that doesn't even own a pair of shoes. Yeah. Uh, since, since that first video we did, have, has it been a, a nice feeling to get so many supportive messages? It's been amazing to me. Um, I was at church. I didn't know anyone from my church would actually watched your program, but I was walking out of my church and it's a large church yesterday. And, um, the security guard at my church grabbed me by the arm and he said, I have prayed for you for a month. I had no idea you sit in front of me at church and this is happening. And thank you for doing this. And then people from all over the world. I'm now in contact with this woman from Australia who has been so supportive. And, you know, every 
day, I'll get a little text. Okay, how are you doing today? Did you sleep last night? And no, I didn't sleep last night. I had nightmares last night um, because of the photographs that I saw of this poor woman who had the, the child taken from her womb. I, I can't get that out of my head. Uh, but having people praying for these kids to make their way to us is just gives us this, I, I, sometimes it feels very lonely because it's a yeah. it's a crazy situation in Haiti right now and it's unbelievable and I would never have guessed that I would be doing anything like this I would have liked to have left it to the doctors and uh, the intellectuals of the world to do something about this but I, I can't think of any other reason that I was born so and I don't I haven't a clue what life would be like normal so yeah. <laughs> I understand. Melatonin I, is my best friend. Yeah. What? Well, oh, I see. To sleep. Yeah. I used to use that that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. I would like to open it up. If people have got questions to ask, or just things that they want me to read out to Susie, I think people. Uh, I think that might be quite nice. Uh, I, I had there was one I can't put on the screen because it 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 was asking of you know innocently enough a question about a particular conspiracy that that YouTube got, really cracks down on, and it was from N E Blue Fire, just about you know that there needs to be a delineation between what we're talking about here and that conspiracy that like powerful people. Um, uh, particularly the Democrats are, are doing this to whatever, you know, that's a separate thing. And I think any blue fires is correct to point out that that's, that's not what we're talking about at all. Um, and I've got a question from Marty Seeks the Truth saying, why hasn't the United Nations intervened? The United Nations has, um, when this, when, when I first became belligerent on every television show I could get on talking about what happens in Haiti to children, the United Nations UNICEF actually opened up a child protection arm in Haiti. You, go, you have to understand that in Haiti, there are, there's, it's not like you can drive somewhere and investigate a story. Right now, Haiti is in a civil war. It is, According to the ambassador that I spoke to um, this week, he said it's like Somalia. And it, it's if you were living in Somalia and you heard about something like this and you're part of the United Nations, you're there as a peacekeeper. Right now, there is no uh, boots on the ground in Haiti. We're, my, my employees are fighting to protect our kids. Yesterday, uh, on Sunday, my phone was buzzing during church and I called my, my orphanage after church. And one of my older kids says, mom, we need bigger guns. And I'm like, the bigger guns is not going to help you. If the gangs want to come in they're they're, they're weaponized. Having our two guards with bigger guns is not going to do anything. I'm apps. You have no idea the letters that I've written to the UN, to the State Department, to my state senator, um, uh, ambassadors who I know uh, care. Uh, there's one ambassador who is completely aware of what's happening. Her name is Pam, Pamela White. She was the first person that I confided in about these crazy things that I was seeing at the um, at the general hospital and I'll never forget it. I was sitting in her office. I had all my photos because I didn't think anybody was gonna believe it. She was so appalled by what she saw in those photos. She took her high heel off and threw it at the window, nearly breaking the window because she couldn't believe that this was happening in a country she was now the ambassador of. I know that she took that case to Washington. I know she talked about it. Um, Washington has not wanted to hear or, and I, I have all those pictures you're seeing right now, the state department has that and videos. The state department has a video that again, I can't, I don't know who took the video, uh, someone in my village of a sacrifice that was actively happened in which the young man 
was eventually beheaded. And you, I, I know I can't talk about the details, but everything that would happen in an organ um, ritual was on that video. State Department has it. UN has it. Do you think I've had a single phone call? No. Why do you think that is? Hmm? Why do I think it is? I think that it's because the U.S. knows that Haiti is just, um, it's diabolical. And this is, I'm not a politician. I graduated 10th grade, but in my small mind, I'm thinking, well, maybe they're afraid that if we um, insult Haiti or push too hard on Haiti, maybe Haiti will go into the hands of the Chinese or the Russians. And it's very logistically close to us. I mean, if we don't continue giving hundreds of millions of dollars to Haiti, they're not going to have any loyalty to the United States and they're so close to us. So I do know that about, I think it's seven years ago, maybe 10 years ago, that the Chinese did try to buy the entire electrical grid in Haiti, which would have actually let wow. them control the entire country. So I don't know, That's these are just thoughts of an, a very um, not so educated politically girl. It's just a mm. thought. It's, that does sound like one thought, and I suppose another might just be they just don't want to do the work. No. They've got enough to do. They don't really care. Um, they don't want to have to get involved in it. They're not, another theory, perhaps, is that they don't want to appear like they're being racist or, um, exactly. or patronizing. So there's mm -hmm. several reasons, I suppose. People keep do keep asking questions, and as I was saying, hit that like button because I th I still don't even know. I've been doing this for years, but I think that spreads the video out so that more people uh, can watch it. So make sure you hit the like and all of that stuff uh, if you want to help with this and spread the word. I've got a question from Hakan Engman saying, "Help with money slash anything else." I suppose a lot of people will be able to you know give money to your your charity that's in the description notes, but some people don't have money to give. What kinds of things can they do to help? You know, that's the same thing. I did not have a dime to give when I started this, but I had, I had a heart and I was curious. So I listened and the more I listened, the more I learned, I came up with incredible ideas of how to do something. Um, these kids, one idea was to get on these donkeys with a megaphone and go like an idiot through these villages yelling. I know 15% you know, of Haitian children are born with disabilities, and that's probably because of the lack of prenatal care. Okay, that's a fact that these 15% of Haitians are born like that. So I'm sitting in my kitchen trying to think, okay, if they're throwing these babies away or they're abandoning them, what little thing can I do? And then that idea of the megaphones. And I called um, social affairs department in Haiti and I said, hey, I know that um, your, the phone company in Haiti called Digicel gives free phones to Haitians. Do you think that social affairs could work with uh, the Digicel phone company and send text messages, send to every woman that owns a phone, a text message saying, if you have a disabled child, please call this number, we can help. And they did it. They did that. And the number was our number. So mm. 4 million Haitian women got that message. And that's what started our little campaign to get this wonderful Colorado family to build us this tiny little therapy unit. And we were I mean, it, it, it didn't cost me personally anything but being interested and thinking it through. And not everybody can fly down to Haiti, and I certainly wouldn't recommend it right now because it is, if you go on the U.S. Embassy website, it says, leave Haiti. Do, do not go to Haiti. Does it say that? Yeah. If you're a foreigner and you're there, leave. Wow. So I think that... A lot of people, if, if, if this were 10 years ago, I would be taking every one of you to Haiti. I would be taking everybody saying, please come. We need the hands and feet. You can hold some of these children. And the day will come again when 
we, it will be safe to go. And if everybody stays involved, then you can be one of those people that go down there and say, I want to hold that baby that looks different. And I want to show you how cherished these children are. It's a child. I, yeah. I can't tell you how many uh, volunteer groups that we've taken in 30 years. And every time it has changed every single life to go and see what just a hug and wiping the sweat off of a crying mother because this baby turned out to be not the perfection that she dreamed it would be. Um, So when you say to help, pay attention, stay involved, keep in touch with us. And I, I'm a big prayer person. So pray. I, I, uh, I would say the same. And as I keep saying, keep liking this and sharing this, it's getting the word out. And I've always said that about these kinds of things. One of the best things you can do is just spread the word and tell, because even if you don't have the money to help and the funds and the time and all those things, some people do. And the more people who hear about it, I mean, I'm amazed to hear that the person at your church, Susie, knew about it. That's the power of YouTube. I would just say thank you to Jessica Corrine for the the super sticker. Um, That's very helpful and lovely. And also to Ellen, not Sarah Lee, who's asked, and thank you, Ellen, is the Dematius family aware of this? Do you know, I don't know who that is. They are. Who are they? Yes. Yes. Yes, they are. If you're talking about the Dematis family in New York, is that who you're talking about? I suppose they they are. I don't know. Uh-huh, I don't know who I that is. So and um, who is it? They've Susie? been amazingly generous uh, generous to us. They've let me um, hold meetings with um, some of the uh, the Catholic entities in New York who have really been our our sustenance during the, the, the lean years when I didn't know how to raise money to do this. People, people like those families, are, they can help financially and they do help financially. And I'm trying, I'm actually not Catholic, but um, the Catholic church works very closely with us in Haiti. Hmm. Who is the Dematius family? There's a hospital um, in, in, um, I can't remember where in New York it is. It's been 25 years since I've been there um, that the DeMattis family founded and built. It's run by the Catholic Church now. I see, I see. And they're sort of aware and stuff, I, I see. Um, I got a, que- a question from Hakan Engman again, saying, how much does it help to be able to speak French in Haiti? I guess a more general question about Haiti. It helps a lot. Um, if you can speak French, you can speak to just about anybody in Haiti. The, hmm. the, the language is actually Creole, which is kind of a mixture of, um, of Portuguese, French, and Spanish. Right. But French is the national language of Haiti. I see. I speak all of those languages. You do? So I could, yeah, French, uh, Portuguese, and Spanish. Wow. Yeah, so I could help, I suppose. Uh, and, and probably should help. Um, I got a question from Krista Cello. It's more of a statement. What's more, uh, she says, what's even more important? Haiti has to ask for the help and be willing to accept it. Is that a fair point? This woman knows Haiti. She, this is the problem. The Haitian people don't, well, it's split down the middle. The poor people want an invasion. They want people, they want boots on the ground. They want the UN to come. The bourgeois do not. The bourgeois are not as affected by the violence as the poor people are. The bourgeois have gated communities. They have well-armed security. If you're, uh, we're in an area that's, it's, you know, it's all peasants. And in that community, we are the only people with guns. Man, it's so complicated. You know what's frustrating is that there were a lot of, I guess it was actually quite rare, but there were a lot of comments say, like casting doubt on some of the things you were saying. And I guess that was over a period of like a month. So every now and then they came through. So we don't really have anybody here saying those things in the chat. Uh, I guess we have that website um, and we've got the pictures. I suppose what someone might say is that these are pictures of of children who, you know, clearly horrible things have happened to them, but we we don't know I guess we can't prove just from photos um, that it was, you know, 
to do with organs or voodoo? No, you, know? you can't prove it. You can't prove what happened. To, if you if you were there watching what happened and why they had their bodies sliced or mutilated, then I think you're probably the one that's doing it. Mm. I saw the aftermath and I also uh, would, I would ask if you know Haitian people, most Haitian people know about this. The ones that I've found that have uh, sent the, the most um, angry mail are the ones who say that voodoo is not um, a blood religion and that it's quite benign. And I realize that there are different um, aspects of every religion, but this is definitely what I've witnessed is in no way benign. It's dangerous, it's terrifying, and it's satanic. Yeah. I've got a question from TB. Susie, how can we organize a charity event for your organization? Is that possible? Can people do that? People can and people do, and that's one way we survive. So, um, Susie, S-U-S-I-E, at HaitiChildren.org is my email. And I've been giving that freely because the people who have reached out to me seem to really want to help and care. I haven't had one single person be mean or um, usually people who do reach out to me actually do want to help. And if you want to be mean, then that's, you know, fine too. I, I've, I've got pretty thick skin. <laughs> yeah, well, fair enough. Um, Hakan Engman asks, uh, that, well, he says that I should uh, help by making a documentary. I think I'd be, from what you've told me, Susie, I'd be a bit scared to go and, and make a documentary. Well, that's, a, Andrew, you mentioned that the first time we ever met is, you know, mm. maybe this should be a documentary. But I have to tell you now, I would not take a documentary crew down because several of the, the journalists who are actually Haitian journalists, and I think there have been eight in the last three years who've been killed uh, by because they're telling oh. stories that aren't, um, they're not complimentary to Haiti. So that's, that would not be something that would be possible now in the future. Yeah, it might be. Oh my word. Okay. But you know, I encourage people to read my book. My book is hard. Um, it's, it's, you know, there's some tearful things in there. But there's also some real um, beautiful stories of wonderful things that happen in Haiti and why mm. I'm, I'm still there after 30 years. So that, the book is Angels of a Lower Flight. And in, in the book, you get to know some of these kids. Most of the kids, I've changed their names because I didn't want them to know that these things had happened to them when they get grown up. I don't want them to know that that's how I found them. Of course. So they just won't know. So you're sort of raising these children. You've adopted, what was it, 112 of them? And, and they 112. won't know. 112. Mm -hmm. Wow. They won't know. Well, sh even if they read your book, they'll know. No. They'll know that this goes on and it could have happened to them. Some of my older children, you know, it's been um, 30 years. Some of my older children who are now have left the orphanage, I, um, they know I've, because they ask. And I tell them, do you really want to know everything? And if they do, I will tell them. And I, I let them know that, but the minute I saw you, I, you became mine. I, you became my heart, my soul. You became everything for me. And it doesn't matter whoever let you go, whoever hurt you. I was hurt too when I was little. I was a foster kid and I'm, I'm so thankful to God that I didn't have to stay with my birth family. And I'm so thankful to God that other people loved me even more than they could. And I'm that, I am that for you. Mm. I could feel, are, you, are you emotional just thinking about it now? Yeah. <laughs> now my kids know what happened to me. Um, they, they can't fathom it because they see an American who they think um, in their eyes, I'm perfect to them except for when they're mad at me, which all kids get mad sometimes. Um, but they think they can't believe that I, what happened to them also, some of them were sexually abused when I got them. And the exact same thing happened to their mom. I said, you know, 
you, you have hope. People love you. And because people loved me, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. And we'll get, we get our kids a lot of psychiatric care too. Okay. So this, this, this happened to, to you in a sense then, because I don't think we went into that last time. I'm sorry, say that again. Did, did I misunderstand that, 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 what, that they are realizing, the children are realizing that, that you had uh, been abused in this way? Is that what oh, you're yeah. saying? Oh yeah, I had a very long, mature talk with my older kids, um, kids that are teenagers, because they couldn't believe that I really, really, really loved them as my own child. And they didn't understand why I had no real family. And I had to explain to them, I don't have, I don't have any relationship with my family because my family gave me up. Um, I was rescued by social affairs because my grandfather raped me and my, he was caught doing that. And um, I was very, very messed up and needed a lot of psychological care. So I wasn't easily placed in um, an adoptive family because I just had too many issues and nobody wanted me. So I'm telling my kids, this is why I understand you. This is why I understand you. I know that you are, your, your head has got to be messed up about the things that have happened to you. Yeah, absolutely. But we well, can get I'm through sorry it. you went through that, Susie. I'm sorry to hear. I didn't realize that you'd had that experience. I'm very sorry to hear it. Well, you know, I'm not a victim. I'm a victor. And I tell my kids the things that have happened to them, I was never left to die. Every single one of my kids was left to die. So I never, ever feel sorry for myself about that. I got in, uh, in a wonderful position of knowing how they feel. And that's, you know, to me, I'm their greatest asset because I know how they feel by yeah. not thinking that, that you're thinking that you're only worth what you can be used for. That's horrific. It really is. I've got uh, a comment from uh, just Tina Teden, is there video documentation of this? I'm just tuning in. Uh, Tina, in the description, we have photographic evidence as, as close to evidence as I think you can get. Uh, many of the people in the chat have clicked on it and have then put in the chat, don't click on it. It's, it's not something that you want to see or to have etched on your memory, but it is there and it's important that people know that this does happen. So uh, that was Tina's question. Uh, Stefan says, I'm not scared of anything, bro. 1985, I'm Yugoslavian. I will go there and film. Whatever, scared of nothing, bro. I seen the war when I was young. I got to move to Canada, but still. Well, Stefan, you can maybe, I don't know, can reach out to the Haiti uh, Children Foundation or and, uh, and and see if that's what something you want to do. Uh, I don't think it's something that I would. You know, I have to do. say to the um, the gentleman from Yugoslavia, mm -hmm. I've been so um, amazed that the people who are filming that the things that I've told you, I've, my employees have sent me. I I don't doubt that someone like you could go down and film what's happening. Um, I you know some people are just made that way. The people who've been sending me film, uh, they're Haitian, so they they fit in. And like I said, almost everybody in, in Haiti has a, a cell phone and they are there in these villages where these things happen. I've often, often asked, OK, you were there. You saw that child being harmed. Why didn't you do anything? And it's not my job. You know, that's what, what I hear. It's not my job. But you told me you wanted to know, so, but that's not my job. And I, I, I'm not, I'm not saying that I could, if I saw that happen, I believe that I would step in and try to harm anyone that was harming a child. But I also realized that I'm re willing to risk my life because it is my life. Would I would I criticize someone else for not risking their life to save another human being? I can't do that because I'm not in their shoes. They may have, you know, family, they may have kids. They may not be in a position to risk their life for something like that. 
Yeah, well, but a lot I of am. the comments, a lot of the comments in chats are saying, you know, they can't believe you're still alive given how much time you spent in this extremely dangerous place. Uh, so if you've just gone around being, I, I think you've gone about it in an intelligent way. Because if you just went in there like a bull in a chi china shop, a bull in a china shop or, or whatever, I, you know, you might not still be here, and you certainly wouldn't be able to help. No, I did some very stupid things. Um, for years, I had no security. Um, I do have security now. And for many, many years, I would do things that I would never do again now. Uh, I used to sleep in the slums by myself. Um, and back then, I think people just thought I was crazy. And if you're crazy in Haiti, people are going to think that you're possessed. And I've been told by some of my school children that, oh, yeah, my 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 um, mom said that you used to come here and everybody thought you were crazy. And so that might have protected me being crazy and not want people not wanting anything to do with the crazy uh, Blanc. But now I'm very careful. I instead of using the same um, place to land, I, I, I never tell the truth about where I'm landing in Haiti. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to a, a certain hotel, I don't tell my security drivers even where we're going. I just point the way where we're going because they could be setting me up too. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't have a lot of trust in anyone there because my life would be valuable because we do have a, a huge home there that is full of children and staff. And I think that probably my ransom would be quite high. And I certainly would never want to put my husband through that. Um, I, I'm really careful. I've worked with a couple of Navy SEALs who've given me some tactics on don't do this, keep your head on a swivel, never tell the truth about where you're going, never, um, when you're in a restaurant, don't sit anywhere except in a corner you, and know where your exit is, um, know if there's a security camera, you know, just things that I never would have thought of before to keep myself safe. I always take two cell phones. I know if I am kidnapped, then I want to be able to have, I, I was in a situation once where I couldn't find my husband and I had to find him and I was trying to call him. If I had had two cell phones, I could have been calling my, um, my girlfriend saying, find my husband. And then on this one, trying to find my husband. But I always have two cell phones because if you got to find somebody now, you got to have people helping you do that. So there's a lot of teeny tiny things that I can do, but it's mostly, you know, God doesn't want me to go yet. And I'm not going anywhere until he wants me. Absolutely. Oh, it's the nature of the work that you do. And, and to a lesser extent, I have it as well. I mean, I was just asked today by a, a journalist who was, who was doing an article about podcasters, you know, where, whereabouts are you based and where's your studio? And I used to say those things and I can't now just because of doing this kind of work, not just obviously with you, but talking about Scientology and things like that, you can get in trouble. And we just sort of, have, you just adapt and you keep moving forward. Uh, we've got 10 minutes left. So everybody do keep hitting that like button to spread the video out and, and keep asking questions questions. Uh, any Blue Fire says, is anybody offering all these women prenatal care, vitamins, nutrition? Absolutely. So, and why? And it's a question you answered before as well. It's a double question. You answered yeah, it before. Yeah, I would love again, to answer. Um, but just what, why are so many of them uh, having disabled and de deformed children? That's the second part. Right. So the reason I believe, and I've worked with a lot of doctors, volunteer doctors, some from Miami Children's Hospital, uh, some from Mount Sinai in New York who have come down and we, we really do believe that it's a lack of certain prenatal vitamins. This has been an issue, especially in my village, um, because 80% of the women there get pregnant before they're 15. So um, Jack Nicholas Children's Healthcare Foundation two years ago, started funding all of this stuff for us. The prenatal medicine, vitamins, um, we're able to give some nutrition. Uh, Food for the Poor helps us with that. Food for the Poor um, allows us to feed about 3,000 
about 3,000 children a day. Um, we might be able to go up to even uh, double that very soon because we're, um, we have two 40-foot containers of um, these rice meals that have all the vitamins in it that's actually being shipped now to us. Um, the prenatal care has been a little bit hard lately because all the roads to our clinic have been blocked off by gangs. We've started using boats to take the, these vitamins and uh, the medicine and we offer birth control, but I cannot, I have not been successful in getting women to take it. It's, it's just, I don't understand why, but I have been mm -hmm. so completely unsuccessful with that. Um, then I've gone to the men and tried to do, you know, the condom distribution. Um, I, I've gotten laughed off the mountain, you know, that it's just not something that's done there right now, but we don't yeah. stop the education. And, um, if my children wanted birth control, I'd be the first to give it to them. I mean, my kids aren't sexually active because they live in an orphanage and, you know, we're, we have, uh, for every fourth, fourth child, we have someone sleeping with them, with them all day. We don't even let our kids go to school without mm -hmm. a security guard walking with them to make sure boys aren't trying to hit on my little girls and, and that sort of thing. But in answer to your question, yes, we are addressing the prenatal health care. Mm. I, I can see how uh, I've definitely seen with, for example, cults and belief systems and things when uh, people are very skeptical of modern medicine and, and, you know, science and things like that. So I can see how that might be difficult to spread, you know. Well, it's like when COVID happened, I thought long and hard before I took the vaccine. And I know that they might, you know, these, these women have never put a foreign substance in their body before, so they don't really get how this works. Um, I had, I was really enlightened when one woman came to me and she said, oh, well, this baby, she brought me a, an infant. And I said, well, how old is the baby? And she said, it's, it's um, 29. And I, it was like, how could that be? And then she explained to me that the baby had been living inside of her for 29 years. So she really thought that the baby, she didn't connect the sexual relations with the baby. Oh, wow. That's fascinating. Yeah. Wow. So it's a lot of sex education, um, explaining I'm not part of their culture. So it's easier for some of the nurses in our physical therapy center to talk to the women when they're coming in and, you know, they're sitting there eating, you know, a, a, a bowl of rice and the, we can, my staff can bring it up and it's more comfortable. Right. I see. It's so complicated, isn't it? Uh, Ellen, not Sarah Lee. Thanks again for your super chat. And she just wants to say, Susie, your heart is more important and bigger than your education. Thank you. And she's beautiful. <laughs> I'm looking at her picture. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a very beautiful person inside and out, apparently. It's very nice of her to say. Uh, and yeah, really, really nice. Miss Mentat, says, uh, Miss Mentat says, I can't imagine having 112 children. Do you remember all their birthdays, their likes and dislikes? Can't wrap my head around it. So my husband and I have all their birthdays on our calendar. Do I remember them? No. But I, for example, today, I know it's Nicole's birthday at the orphanage. Um, and I know, of course, I know all their names because I gave them their names. Um, and my kids, I Zoom with my kids when I can't go there. I used to go to Haiti a month there and a month home because I had to raise money. So I would go. And also, you know, my husband is wants me home. So um, I used to live with my kids until the earthquake took down our orphanage that had my apartment in it. So I know their names. I named them. Um, I know sometimes too much about them. Um, right now we're going through a situation where my girls, girls can be uh, very difficult. Sometimes I'm learning I've got some, some of my girls right now that are very um, angry with me because I won't give them a cell phone, okay? I don't want my girls to have a cell phone because 
I don't want them to see things like this without my supervision. My boys could care less. They're into sports. They don't, they play soccer all day. They don't care. But my girls, I, I actually have uh, on Sunday, two of my girls told me they were going to run away. So I know, I know a little bit of every heart that we've raised. It's not easy, is it? Um, thank, thank you, everyone. Um, I just, you know, thanks for all the whatever. Hit the likes, of course, and all that, as I keep saying, because that helps spread the video around. Do comment below afterwards. Um, and I would just say, go, I mean, where where should they go? We've got your foundation below, Susie, in the description. Should they go there and give to that and spread the word? Yeah, HaitiChildren.org, that's our website, or .com. Um, you can get there either way. And then my email is Susie, S-U-S-I-E, at HaitiChildren.org. And the, the Facebook community is growing really fast. And I'm loving having people with ideas that just one person just can't come up with solutions. So it's been an um, amazing blessing to me. And just having that guy come up to me at church was like, <laughs> how random was that? Oh, Andrew, everybody loved you. <laughs> oh, they don't. They love you. They, they, they really care about you. It's about the guests, this channel. So, you know, I, I guess I'm good at picking nice, good guests. Um, so, yeah, guys, if you see Susie out and about, tell her some nice things. Send her, a, send her an email and, and, and go to her foundation. And, and can I introduce her. my dog? Yes, obviously. <laughs> That's Floyd. Floyd. Hello, Floyd. Lovely <laughs> Floyd. I'm a big dog person, so I love Floyd. Everybody send your love and support to... to wait, what was it? Floyd, did you say? Floyd. Yeah, send like your love Floyd and support from, to Floyd. You wouldn't know the uh, Andy Griffith show, but Floyd no. was the barber on the Andy Griffith show back in the 60s. You would not oh. know that. <laughs> I don't know that. I've, I know the name Andy Griffiths, I think. Um, but yeah, go and do all that. Follow and like and share. Uh, if you're sticking around on this channel, it's going to redirect you to a new video about Meghan Markle that's coming out. So do stick around for that and like that and do all the stuff there if you want to support the channel. Support Susie below uh, in the description and have a, a, a nice evening, everybody. Thank you so much for coming and thanks for all your questions.